Jeff Cornelis, Flemish filmmaker that I think you got very preliminarily introduced by Rosie Cooper in our first session, as it happened with your panel. So is a more in-depth presentation. Hi. Well, not that in-depth, actually. <laughs>
streaming from the internet because the only way that we can access these films at the moment is through the online archive um, that Argus has given us. So, let's hope that this works. And like, it, it's kind of interesting coming on from what we've just been talking about with Stephanie in terms of architecture and Le Corbusier especially. Um, so, this is 45 minutes long, as most of his films are that were made for television, taking into account um, credits and commercials and such. So obviously we won't be sitting here watching the whole thing, but I just thought it would be really nice to show you a few snippets of this film. <laughs> The street and its entire environment is being torn up and is dying out, condemned for not being able to integrate into society. A society which only seems to know one kind of effectiveness, that of hybrids. stake in the end, or at least who should be at stake, is being pushed back into an ever smaller place and locked up in his house. Around his house, the area has become unsafe, 
not only because he may come across other people who do not belong to his neighborhood, but also because it has become an area which is legally reserved and entirely unnatural. He can only be in this area by using a machine. The effectiveness of the road system not only affects the existing residential areas, it also determines the new lifestyle itself. Whatever the way of living will be like, it will no longer be living in community. There is no public place anymore where you may find men's presence, such as in the traditional settlements, towns or villages. Apartment buildings are being built, like racks in a shop, where canned foods are nicely stored. Even in the luxurious residential areas, community life has disappeared. There is no room left which interrelates the various villas, no street that expresses human interrelationship. Everybody behaves as if he lives alone in the world.
domestic environment of some kind. So we looked for a long time for a kind of an apartment basically to house these film works in and, and in some kind of um, very programmed way we would show the works of Jeff Cornelis on televisions in a domestic environment. Um, when Kuhn, one of the curators that we're working on, who's extremely knowledgeable about Jeff Cornelis, the, an expert and works extremely closely with Jeff, um, also living in Brussels, uh, when he came over last time, we spoke um, a lot about Jeff's in interest in social housing and kind of attacking the individual, the idea of the individual within this very um, planned, urban, structured environment. Um, and kind of his, his slightly political, very political, um, slightly left-wing approach to attacking the bourgeois um, kind of society of the time. So similarly with actually Toporon, it's kind of how development in the 1960s was really affecting society as a whole. Um, and actually, one of our fellows, um, Tim, went for a very long walk, and the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, went for a very long walk, and we found this amazing space that some of you might know um, up in L3. And it was built by John Hughes um, in 1935. Um, and it's a beautiful, quite a beautiful building. I mean, back in the 1935, it would have been not the most desired place to live. Um, there was supposed to be three of these in Liverpool, two of which got bulldozed. Um, and uh, there were, there were um, social housing. So and now they're student apartments. So it's kind of like this relationship between this space that was made for people. It has this kind of horseshoe shaped structure where you can actually see your neighbors kind of from afar. And it has this kind of quite amazing circular structure that, it, that does make you kind of feel like you can, that you're in a, a certain community. Um, now student apartments, we're hoping to actually host this exhibition. You can kind of see through the archway there, there's a small office which was probably built in the 70s, I imagine. Um, and we're hoping to build, uh, to actually create a small exhibition of mm -hmm. Jeff Cornelis' work and related archive in this space. So at the moment we're negotiating this with, with um, the owners of this building, um, but we're nearly there. So I did want to show you this because I felt like it was quite important to contextualise his work in a space rather than just talk about it as this kind of ephemeral thing, that this is, this is hopefully going to happen. It's not going to be in a domestic space, but I think it, it is in a space that very much is um, in relation to, uh, to a lot of his work and a lot of his, intention, his political intentions within his work as well. Um, which I think is important within Liverpool City also. Um, these are some stock old uh, photos I actually found just on the <laughs> internet of families who lived in St Andrew's Gardens in the 60s, having these big communal dinners right in the courtyard area. And just kind of that idea of community, if you will, is just not the same anymore, um, especially in Britain anyway, having these kinds of essentially street parties. You can see that's it inside of the kind of horseshoe ring doused in all of these um, celebrations, it's obviously a wedding or something like that. So we're really hoping to have um, one main screen, which will have a weekly program, which is curated by Cohen, who I've mentioned before, um, in the space, and then two smaller screens, um, which will show the weekly program, and you'll be able to choose yourself what you watch. So it's really like watching television. And as you probably got a sense of the film that I just showed, The Street, it's such a different texture and relationship to television. I mean, we would never see anything like this now, even on like BBC Two, um, even at 3 a.m. Like you just wouldn't see this kind of like deadpan voiceover and these like very long shots. You know, it's, everything's really, really kind of fast and, and dynamic in the way that we kind of view documentary now. Um, so that leads me on maybe to show you the, the next film, um, which is more directed at his, um, his documentary making about, specifically about art. 
Um, I was going to show you maybe one um, based upon just one singular artist, but I felt like I should show you this one, which is called Music Box, which was made in 1997, a year before he actually left, um, left television completely because it became so corporatized. He, he was kind of pushed out of his job. He was given, he was offered a um, voluntary redundancy and has never worked in television again. Um, but I thought this had a kind of a very different texture to it and also it is a, basically a conversation. It's got um, subtitles, they're not very easy to read, so do like bear with it. Um, basically a group of people talking about how you interpret art and how you, and what kind of signifiers you look at certain paintings and what you know what certain things mean um, in relation to like a wider narrative. So I thought that would be quite an interesting thing to end on or at least go into a conversation about what perhaps you could get from this situation working on Jeff Connellis. Because I think there's a huge amount of material here. I mean some of these materials never been well, most of it's never been seen in the UK <coughs> and it, most of it doesn't have English subtitles yet, so it hasn't even been viewed by a British audience, I guess it's a, a mainly um, English speaking audience in any case. So he's an extremely interesting artist especially if you're interested in any way in film, television, and kind of white, white documentary language. Um, but anyway, I'll show you this, this film quickly. You can tell this is a little snazzier as well, because it was made in the 90s.
étrange. C'est une image. C'est une œuvre d'art.
projekt kan lezen, is dat we Kunti Ak Ignotus. Ignotus. Geleerd, maar dom. Of wetend, maar perfect onwetend. Yeah, that's kind of why this exhibition 
exhibition seems quite important in a way to kind of make this public now. There's a lot of distributors involved. And Argos, as I said, he, they're one of the kind of main European distributors for a lot of artist film, um, similar to Lux here. Um, so no, you kind of need viewing copies and all those kinds of things. It's quite an arduous process, actually. Um, but, I mean, recently, the Tate Modern showed one of his films on Richard Hamilton, for example. So they are being shown every now and then, but there's quite a lot of restrictions in, in like, they're not on YouTube or Uberweb or any of those kinds of open the access. The name, um, Sorry? I'm sure they could if they went down the, the very complicated routes of, of film distribution and legalities involved in that. But yeah, I think it's you know it's it's a, an, almost like an estate now, so it's about keeping Jeff Canales 